My Legion of Art Nerds, I am Mocky Millis AAA, and today I thought I was going to do something a little bit different. I have thought about doing this video for ages, but I've never done it. But I just recently hit my two year anniversary on YouTube, and I thought maybe, maybe I'd do something a little different. And what we're going to do today is we're going to do behind the scenes, like the making of the animatic that I made, Death by Glamour. So here it is, the making of Death by Glamour. So before Death by Glamour, I had absolutely no experience with animation at all. I will always be an illustrator over an animator. But the funny thing is, ever since I was in seventh grade, my dream when growing up was to become a storyboard artist, which is underneath the like animation degree. And I had so much portfolio work for illustration, but I, I've never, I didn't have any portfolio work for the field that I wanted to go into. Well, that's not gonna get me into being a storyboard artist if I don't have any any portfolio work or experience. So um, I just recently got into Undertale and I made it all the way up to Metaton. I didn't even finish the game and I was automatically sold. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Perfection. The song, the emotions, the character, uh, the fact that the fight wasn't just a fight, but it was also a dance, um, everything about it. I, I had this crystal clear image of what I saw happening during the fight in my head. And I, I made this realization that I had no portfolio work as an animator or a storyboard artist around the same time. And I'm like, you know what? I should start doing that. So yeah, it was my first attempt uh, at taking any form of crack of, of animation or anything regarding the field. I wanted to do Death of Glamour. Um, like an insane person, because any rational person would probably start animation or anything like that with, you know, a walk cycle or a ball bouncing. Is a Jarvis. Sometimes you gotta run before you can walk. Planning. Um, so I went ahead and made a rough script. I tried to keep it as simple as possible. I didn't want to overwhelm myself. <laughs> the more I got further into the project, uh, the more and more complicated it became. And, and how could it not, you know, like, how could it not keep changing? There's so many elements to the fight. Uh, so I went ahead and made a script, and I broke the script up into color-coordinated pieces. So my script was very, like, it wasn't just a typical script. I had to divide it up into colors to keep track of everything that I was doing, from uh, following along with the song, make sure I was animating to the song correctly, um, and everything, because you see, I didn't have an animation program um, when I made Death by Glamour. All I had was my video editing program, which at the time was Camtasia, and Photoshop Elements 11, which is what I use to paint. And unlike Photoshop, uh, Photoshop Elements does not have an animation feature to it. So I had no timelines, I had no direction of frames, couldn't keep track of what I was doing while I was animating, I wasn't able to like just scroll back and see how it was coming along. Um, animating in two or three or one, non-existent, <laughs> completely non-existent. So this animatic that Death by Glamour is in is by animation structure and standards is it's completely broken. <laughs> this animatic was literally made by the equivalent of scotch tape and popsicle sticks and maybe some Elmer's glue. Maybe. So I had no way of keeping track of anything. However, lucky me, I was classically trained as a violinist and which means I understand music theory to a basic degree. That's how I went about keeping track of what I was doing. So the music guided me and quite literally guided the entire animation. Using basic music theory to construct the structure of the animatic. Uh, the song Death by Glamour is in 4-4, meaning there's four beats per measure, right? Well, 4-4 four, four can be easily counted in eight. Um, or in other words, counting two measures of, in four, as if it's one long measure. Much like how you do in a dance class. Um, a lot of times in a dance class, you a lot of the, the songs that you dance to are in 4-4, four, four, but instead of counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And being as it, it just so happened to be really fitting because Death by Glamour, the song, is it's also kind of a dance. And in the song Death by Glamour, if you notice, each theme usually lasts and transitions for about two sets of eight beats. So it's perfect to transition scene to scene in counting to eight, 
or two measures of four, four. Of every transition, every landing of an attack, every head turn, every scene fits these sets of eight beats. And if you watch stuff by Glamour, you can literally count along with it and see how things match up with the beat. The transitions between one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 I, I divided all of these uh, counted beats to match the color coordinated of the script so I knew where I was going because there was no other form of guidance that I could do because I didn't have an animation program and how the animation was going to work. Cutting them up in bite-sized pieces also made the whole thing a lot less overwhelming. Working in programs not meant for animation as far as actual animation goes. I would use a new layer um, in my in Elements 11 to make up the upcoming frame and all the elements in all the frame so it's a finished uh, frame so I'm not just working on animation I'm doing everything in each frame one at a time <laughs> look look at how many frames and drawings are in here look at ah, ah once I finished one of the color coordinated scenes like pink or green or blue or whatever uh, I would save each finished frame individually organize them into their own respected color folders and then put them in one by one into Camtasia doing my best to make them match up with the music and adjusting the picture size by counting each set of eight beats in my head while listening to the music it was a brutally slow and tedious process. Not being able to fit everything in. I actually had a lot of ideas that I wanted to incorporate into Death by Glamour, but unfortunately, the song of Death by Glamour, it's too short to fit everything in. I mean, I barely had any time to show the process of Metaton losing his arms. I mean, obviously it doesn't take just one hit to the, the soul for him to lose his limbs, but... Well, hello, Habibi. Hello. But the, the problem is, um, the problem is Death by Glamour is only like 2 minutes and 30 seconds, uh, give or take. I think it's a little bit less, um, if I remember correctly. And, uh, yeah, you can't, you can't fit everything in. <laughs> I did want, like, for example, some of the things I wanted to put in, um, I did want to put in a break time moment, like what happens in the game, showing Metaton and Frisk sitting back eating Glamburgers. Um, I also wanted to incorporate Burger Pants watching the show from his work looking nervous and absolutely miserable, but seeing Metaton and his little buddy fighting on screen. Um, but yeah, can't, can't fit everything into 2 minutes and 30 seconds. After Death by Glamour was done, I met a lot of people, and after the project was finished uh, as an automatic for what you've seen on YouTube, we actually wanted to try and expand on the project to fully animate it and give it a whole dub and everything properly but unfortunately things just kept getting in the way and it fell through everyone thank you so much darling perhaps it might be better if i stay for a while humans already have stars and idols but monsters they only have me Choreography. Coming up with choreography was by far the most difficult part of it, <laughs> of the freaking animatic. Some parts are really easy, such as it's just reaction and cause of to whatever, but coming up with the actual dance was quite difficult, actually. Uh, I know the dance is probably too fast to do in real life, but I still wanted it to be human made possible, even if it needed to be slowed down. I actually searched around watching YouTube videos of real people dancing, um, trying to find the style that I was looking for, and it was actually a mix of styles. I, I got a lot of their inspiration looking off of jazz dances. I would watch these videos of people dancing. Uh, I didn't want them to be too random poses overall. I wanted to be like an actual, like I wanted it to feel like an actually choreographed dance. Characters. Of course, throughout the whole thing, I wanted to make the characters as accurate as possible. I wanted their personalities to shine throughout the whole thing through body language and expression. I didn't want any vocals or dialogue. 
needed because I wanted it to be like a music video over anything else. But of course, every every artist has their own interpretation of what the character would look like from the pixel of the game to their style. And, and all of them are really cool. Like for, I guess, example, like how I would open Frisk's eye every once in a while. That was just a stylistic choice. But even still, I put a lot of thought into the designs. Um, I mean, even made every single expression that Metaton would make uh, match some form of expression that he made actually in the game. And of course, Sans. Sans! So, <laughs> Yes, there, there's a few easter eggs um, in, the, in the actual fight, one of which is Papyrus gaining hearts in his eyes, which is actually a reference to the, the shipping Papiton, being as Papyrus is such a fanatic of Metaton. And seeing his new human friend in a show with his biggest idol, <laughs> I had to show it. Uh, I don't seriously ship the couple, I'm not really a bunch of a shipper at all, but I do enjoy a lot of the hilarious comics and content that has come from that shipping, so I had to reference it. <laughs> I just I felt the need. The soda and burger disappeared right after Sans freaks out about Frisk being on TV, very little people caught that. Also, uh, the soda is primarily supposed to be a reference to Coca-Cola because it's my favorite. It's my favorite soda. And another one is actually is one of my original characters being in the audience right here. My character Resum is actually there. He is a little character of mine that I made back in the seventh grade, way back in the day. He seemed to match the Book of the Monsters so well, like he just blended in, so I had to put him in there. And then of course. Sans, the one everyone noticed too much and um, won't shut up about in the comments. <laughs> the one that everyone is wondering if anybody else saw him in the audience. Yes, everyone saw him in the audience. If you check the comments, you'd be able to see that everyone saw him. You don't need to make a comment about it. <laughs> Sorry, it's, just, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's literally 80% of the comments under the video. I, so I've gotten people accusing me that I made a mistake putting him in there twice. Uh, I've also gotten people trying to start arguments uh, in, the, in the comment section about how Sans can travel through time, uh, how he understands the game files, how he can travel through the code and teleport, but yet can't be in two places at once. And then some people who understand, some people who understand that it's just a joke. <laughs> it's priceless. The fires under the comments. Stop! Stop overthinking it. Uh, let me let me shed some light over it. But um, but stop overthinking. It's real. It's just a joke. It's it's not meant to be anything like explained or logical. In fact, the joke was actually meant to make less sense in the beginning. Um, I wanted to have a kind of cameo joke of a character being in two places at once in the audience, something that didn't make sense. But I originally had it where the duplicate in the audience was going to be none other than the loving fanatic of Metaton, Papyrus. You can even see him in 1-11 of the video, if you look really carefully, barely on the top right corner of the TV screen, that he is still there from the original frame before I took him out and put Sans into the audience instead. It, it wasn't until later that my friend Joe brought up the fact that it would should be Sans in the audience to make a parody joke on the fact that Sans could teleport. It didn't need to make sense but it fit the character better, especially how Sans is a jokester, and it's literally a joke. So it also fit him in the context of, it's making fun of a joke, the fact that he could teleport. Sure, he can't be in Two Blades once, but it's making fun of that. And it's also making fun of the joke that Sans makes jokes. So it was later changed to Sans being in the audience instead. It's, it's just a joke. It's just a joke about how Sans can teleport, but. Don't overthink it. <laughs> it's, it's not supposed to make sense. That, uh, it's pretty much it. It took me a little under four months to get uh, Death by Glamour done. There is 741 frames throughout the whole thing. Seems like I'm walking the park now compared to the amount of frames I've been dealing with. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the process of how I made Death by Glamour. Let me know if you guys want to see the behind the scenes or a making of regarding Satan or my future animations. Oh, and. Before I go, I just want to say, um, I actually do have an official merchandise shop now. I, I'm selling Walking Melons AAA merch, and I, I'm also doing original stuff too. But yeah, so check up on that. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Bye!